Is the APC House in order? Where will the vote come in 2023 if the magnet of President Buhari is no more on the ballot? And Southwest states, namely Lagos, Ogun, Oyo, Ondo, Oshun, and Ekite, have launched a security formation to tackle the problem of insecurity within the region. The collaboration is tagged Operation Amotekun. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. Thank you for joining us. Today on PLOS Politics, we'll start things just a little differently. We'll bring you our PLOS packages, focusing on the stories that have trended on the news today. We start with the Edo faction. We talk to see our, our chairman of Waten. We come to visit our governor for the new year so that we have prayer with him, that God should continue to help him elevate him for this good work he's doing in Edo State. Let the water, the if there's even take tender, we are ready to give to the governor. Since they say he must have two tender, we cannot have three tender, Let's, let us be done with the people, not Percy though. But he said that his authority must, must uh, prevail. We said no. Now we are here to identify with him, to wish him a happy new year. And secondly, to let the whole world know that in Wotel, that I came from, the national chairman has been suspended. It's a suspension. Parody itself as a national chairman is against the law. But I don't know if you put the, the, the penalty. Because if he continues, I believe we head up in jail. So if you love him, I speak on behalf of it, I congress no government leaders, all the world youth leaders we have met and discussed are concluded. That is also special. I cannot call any BT, and none of us will obey the BT. Under the circumstances, you would uh, expect that um, uh, people at the world level would have been put under extreme pressure by now. So you can understand uh, their situation. But as you can see, these men and women are determined to ensure that justice prevails in APC in Edo State. In Edo State, Oshomole has been suspended by a factional uh, part of the party, APC. And of course, we know that the governor is at loggerheads with him. The House of Assembly doesn't seem to have found a rhythm yet. Legislation is yet to happen in Edo State because of all the shenanigans that is going on. Will this party be able to put their house together? Well, we'll see what unfolds. Let us see what the PDP is doing. The meeting of uh, leaders of uh, those state PDP, uh, in fact, you can go ahead and uh, refer to it as a New Year meeting, where once again we have uh, stated our resolve to ensure that we win back in those state. We, are, we express our disappointment at what is going on in the state. Everybody has aspirations, everybody has a dream. What the party's position to do with the governance leadership have in PDP is to work hard to win the governorship election in the state. Being a political party is good, but being in government is what is important. That's the essence of politics. If the leadership thinks that's what they want to do, it doesn't stop my aspiration. There are a lot of good candidates in PDP that are aspiring to be government. But at the end of the day, the people of the party, the leadership, and the people in the state will determine who rules them. Obviously, you know that over the years, PDP has one family. Even when there's little misunderstanding, we always settle behind closed doors. Um, I don't think anything will be different just now. Um, if there are crises in uh, political parties, obviously. The PDP seem like they're trying to put their house in order as well. Will the APC follow suit? That's part of what we'll be focusing on today on Plus Politics. But for now, let's go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll bring you a little more packages before we bring in our guests. Stay with us.
You're watching Plus TV Africa. The program is Plus Politics, and today we are looking at a couple of issues, two specifically. In March 2010, Buhari left the ANPP for the Congress for Progressive Change, CPC, a party that he had helped to found. He ran to the APC for the 2015 presidential election as its candidate, and he won. He assured Nigerians he's not running for a third term, but the immediate past Minister of Communication, Adebayoshi too, on Wednesday said that the All Progressive Congress might find it difficult to get votes in 2023 general elections if the party failed to put its house in order. I'm joined by our senior programs producer, Fumi. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you very much. Okay. okay, so let me put you on the spot straight okay. up. Is Buhari the magnet that glues APC together? Yes, well, in, in my opinion, I'll say yes, and this is it. You know, APC really didn't have like a rallying point until Buhari came in. And he came in and he, he used that platform to, to get Jonathan out. Because whether we like it or not, even if you looked at all the elections that um, Buhari had lost in the past, he had significant votes, especially from the northern states. And if you could see, like we know, the south, um, southeast, the south-south are quite divided, you know, in their votes. And all, but the north is very united. If you look at even the past election, he had overwhelming votes from the north. So I see what Adebayo Shiti, the point he's trying to make in the sense that... In the past, just before, you know, when the elections started and even after the election started, you just played the package of um, Edo State's crisis, in, you know, in APC and Oshomale and Obasaki are going back and forth with the issues. There's a lot of problems in the APC and many people worry that APC just became that platform of opportunity. 2023, you know, Buhari is no more running and has assured us he's not going for a third term. So now that it's off the table, the house may just fall apart and not have that, you know, strength to get back together and present a, a strong front for 2023. But if it, it's a marriage of convenience that exactly. seems to That's have right. worked. That's okay. what pundits say. It's a marriage of convenience. Yeah. But it seems to have worked. They won the presidency. And in the last dinner election, they won quite a number of states. Mm. Uh, don't you think that they might ride on that success to get more votes in 2023? Okay, you know, first of all, zoning is one of the main things that they're also looking at currently because... Uh, hopefully or if they stick to this agreement of zoning they're not going to zone to the north anymore because you know in the first term they presented buhari second time they presented buhari we haven't found a strong united candidate that the apc has even brought forward or even pretended to say okay look there is a likelihood that they may bring this so there are all sorts of names even the um, um apc chieftain um ashiwa Ahmed bolat cinema has also been touted as one of the candidates for 2023 even though recently i said look don't talk about zoning don't talk about this so we don't know who the you know the candidate is. if you have like a strong candidate that are, are now if the zoning is going to come to the south the south is divided. The, you have the southeast, you have the south, um, southwest, you have the south south that are not united on all fronts like the, the north is. So how are you going to, how is APC going to pull that up? And then you have all these pockets of crisis on different factions, you know, of the, you know, there's even a different faction of the APC um, led by uh, uh, Bubag, um, Al Jezra. Al Jezra, different. So the APC already has this problem. Oshomale is you know, having issues with so many parts so, so of the party. So how do you think that this Oshomole uh, crisis is going to play in? It's not just in a dirty state. Yes. Yeah, where, during yeah, there are different the period, states, yes. there have been people that have been complaining about the leadership style, the style of, of Oshomole. How will this play in the coming days in preparation for 2023? I think this is the best time for them to get their house in order. So the elections are over. The people that have won have won. People that have lost have lost. And if you ask me, look, I'm not a politician, you know, I'm just a journalist, but I just feel like some of those issues may look very, um, you know, very tough or very difficult on the surface. But if you ask me on the bottom line, it's just very simple because most of these are always on selfish interest because the underlying factor with the Baseki issue is they believe that they're bringing um, Ize Yamu in to take him out for his next time and, you know, put him in. So there's just a lot of, I think if we remove all the selfish interests, if we remove all the greed, if we remove all the issues, they're able, he's going to be, or if a Shomali comes down from his high horse and, you know, he sits with his party people and say, look, this and this is what is, let us all focus on the goal of 20, um, 23, of course, not forgetting that we still have to rule the people and ensure that the country runs properly in as much as we are focusing on 2023. But if, I feel like if he sits down with all his party members, because the only other option, if he doesn't sit down with them, will be they have to, you know, look for a way to, 
it, either vote him out or take him out. So that's just the... Only there answer. really seem to be a lot of issues that the APC needs to put together because whether we like it or not, the conversation about 2023 yeah. is upon us already. Mm -hmm. um, if, if we're to, still talking about the difficulties, the AP, because Shetri is saying that, that, that they need to put the house in order, but the leadership, like you rightly noted, seem a bit divided. Mm -hmm. We have the fiasco in Taraba State. The Supreme Court just yes. um, yesterday or so uh, ruled that they have no stand to come to the courts to ask for a candidate to be given. So how do you think that they are going to resolve that situation in Taraba? We've not even gone to the southeast now where they don't seem to have any state at all. Mm. Well, for Taraba, I, you know, the, where the courts, where the, when, when the law is involved, you really can't. If, if it hadn't gone to court, maybe the parties would have sat down because, you know, it's just also the parties. And it, like I, I say, it still goes back to the head. Oshamale has to probably do like a, a, a national tour, go around all the states and make peace. Because even for even the parties... Like that, a goodwill like movement. Like a goodwill movement and truly listen out to the issues and trash it out. Because, and he has to start from his home state. He has to start from his home state. All this trouble that they've had in Edo State back and forth. If he does not even start... If he can't solve the crisis in his own home state, how does he solve the crisis in Taraba State? If he doesn't solve the crisis in his own home state, how will he go around to the other states? And he has to do it quickly because a lot of people, you know, even in... Uh, in the Kogi state election that was, you know, recently um, that Yahaya, there were a lot of disgruntled people, even also in the APC that didn't want him to, you know, to come back as well to, so there were, there were a lot of disgruntled people that he needs to, Oshamale needs to go around, sit down with, talk with, and because if he doesn't do that, what is going to happen in 2023, 20, um, and a lot of people have predicted this before, the party will fall into factions. And once they fall into, you know, factions, this is not what will happen. They will probably go, some other people will go out and go and form another party. And by the time people are leaving to form parties here and there, then, you know, everything is, is really literally just things fall apart. Okay, so before I let you go, the, the question about the 12 million votes of the 15 million that Buhari Brought won in, with, yeah. 12 came from the North. Exactly. Do you think that however they resolve this, um, the issues that they have as a party, that they will be able to put up a united front that will get such amount of votes from the North for any candidates that they pick? Uh, I, I'm not sure because I just feel like the North, every time they... I won't say like every time, but most of the time when they bring a vote, I, it always tilts towards the the someone from their region. So unless they can find a strong candidate, and they have to start finding that person now, they have to find a strong candidate like Buhari that the Northerners love, that the people love, and then they really because you know he has this overwhelming, he has had this overwhelming vote for you know for quite a while. So thank you very much uh, for me for coming on the program. Pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll go on a short break, and when we come back. The program continues interesting conversations here on Plus TV Africa. Still on the APC and 2023 ticket, I am now being joined by Mitchell Agatsi, a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Felicity. All right, just before you came in, I was speaking with one of our program's producers here for me, and she talked about, you know, the challenges that might face uh, the APC in the coming elections. Do you think, really, that Buhari is the magnet keeping the APC together? What well, happens when he doesn't come again? Well, I would say that Buhari is really a rally force within the APC. Um, these were unwilling bedfellows from the get-go and um, there are significant divisions within the APC that he still wades in and becomes their unifying factor for a number of reasons, not least the fact that he can pull the number of votes, especially in the North, that almost nobody else can. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether the people who are considered to be national leaders within the APC can so pull such a force when he steps off the scene. So we're talking about people like Tinubu. Would Tinubu have the rallying cry of the people in the North or the East? Questions about people like Adam Zoshomole, the national chairman, who even while there is such a fractious um, personality. So it remains to be seen the type of person that can step into that role of, you know, leader of the party, presidential candidate, that the rest of the party will rally around. But what do you think that the ex-minister of communication, Shichu, will meant when he said they need to put their house in order because as it stands if you take away the Buhari faction you're taking about people say you're taking about 
12 million votes from the APC. What does he mean by putting the House in order when the leaders of the House, like you rightly pointed out, like Oshomole, is factionalizing the party? Well, yeah, um, and I, I really don't know what the man means, but um, when one thinks about it, it's the fact that um, the type of ability to win votes and um, win two elections, presidential elections, they might not have it without um, a Buhari figure at the figurehead. Um, he's a polarizing factor, especially among the elite and among the educated, but one cannot rival the fact that um, among the grassroots supports, especially in the North, um, he has almost a cult-like following. Now, for me, in terms of putting their house in order, the question is what exactly is the house that needs to be put in order? Um, one of the issues with Nigerian politics is the fact that we're not rallying around an ideology. We're usually rallying around a person. So it is the case that um, a lot of people who have sought shelter in the ABC now, if Buhari was to leave and the chances of an APC victory were not as certain, then um, they might decide to pitch their tents elsewhere. Um, however, Nigerian politics is also a bit of um, rent seeking sometimes. It's about tit for tat. What can I offer you for you to, for me to have your loyalty? Now, um, we all know that someone like Tinubu, um, I'm not saying that that's what he does, but he seems very well versed in playing the Nigerian political game and in ensuring that he builds bridges across the country and ensures that he gets loyalty. So the question then becomes that, well, maybe it might not be the cult like following, but if he's able to get enough um, should I say, big name interest in the different regions of the country, then we might be able to see a different APC that is still formidable in elections. But for me, um, as a passing observer that is neither APC nor PDP as of this time, um, I think the most important thing is for us to have healthy enough debates, powerful enough parties that can you know, go toe to toe, such that um, the people then have a true choice. Do but you in think, saying, you see that yes. happening in the current reality. That like you just yes. said yourself that uh, the politics that we play is you mm -hmm. align to things that favor you. Mm -hmm. And most people have also said that the APC is a marriage of strange bedfellow yes. with similar interests. When yeah. that interest moves away, like yes. the person of Buhari, what happens? Yes. How can they stay together? Yes. Well, and 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 again, for me, it's about ideology or in the alternative, finding a reason or a common um, opponent. So um, in the last, the first election, that's the 2015 election, um, a lot of Nigerians were frustrated by um, Good Luck Jonathan, um, and they were able to capitalize on that. A lot of politicians were frustrated for different reasons, um, for, um, with Good Luck Jonathan. So their reasons might not have been altruistic as, you know, nation building. Their reasons might have been because they had been shut out and they were no longer, you know, sucking at the um, center of the national prosperity milk, you know. So for me, it really is a question that, well, whoever is going to step into that um, seat and step into the position of de facto leader, i.e. presidential candidate for the APC, um, should be able to find a new rallying cry. Um, it need not always be the case that um, the rallying cry or the basis of commonality is the same way that Buhari had his own basis of commonality. It might be something else. Um, for me as a Nigerian, what I would prefer is if the basis of commonality was an electrifying candidate with exceptional policies that people are just like, look, we just have to cite him. And um, for the other party to also be like, well, if you're going to have that, well, we're going to also have someone exceptional. Then we would actually happily go to the election polls. But beyond these two guys, well, um, also as a Nigerian, Sometimes, why do we even need to ensure that they continue to be a good force? Why isn't it the case that, well, they should, you know, grow so big that they eat themselves apart, such that the third force can then become actually a force to be reckoned with? And maybe then we can depart from this two-party system that has, as many people say, failed us, failed our development, failed our policy making, and have a clean start. 
do you see this party being with all these challenges? Yes. We have the Oshimali leadership uh, grappling. Awesome. We have the Taraba situation. Absolutely. We also know that in the southeast, yes. some they don't have much states. They are yes. saying they are going to strategize. I'll get to that question yes. in a bit. But do you see them being able to put all of this together mm. to bring a united front come 2023? Well, you know, the thing with presidential elections is that it rallies people in a way that otherwise will not. At the moment, they have small fry that they're, they're, they're dealing with. But even among the small fry, even among the states, um, oftentimes they prefer that their party is the party at the center. So sometimes they put aside issues um, and they, you know, execute an election. You would also realize, and I think to give you a different bent on this analysis, is um, what we had with respect to the last elections. Um, I think it was the PDP then when Atiku won and a lot of people were um, upset in the PDP. And um, they created their reconciliation committees. Now, I don't know what these reconciliation committees do, but we had people who were happy at the end of it all and um, threw their weight behind the leader of the party to win the election. Also with the APC, if you remember, Atiku was in the APC. He was a presidential candidate. Rocha Sokoracha was there as a presidential candidate. Um, Sam Ndaizai, I think his name was, was also there as a presidential candidate. The guys who lost, they all supported. You know, So there's something that a presidential election does. Um, there are a lot of promises you can make when you're running for office as um, president. And sometimes maybe that is the unifying factor that they need. It's not the ideal situation, but it is the case that sometimes that's the case, um, which is why for me, um, I want a different way of thinking about this unification. I want a different way of thinking in that I want these parties to come out and say, well, we're now in power. We've done all of this. We've compromised all along to get into power. Now that we're in a strong enough position, let us now um, have a kind of clear ideology. Let us now have the right people to run our elections for us. Let us now ensure that we actually prosecute these elections in a clean manner. Let us now actually seek for the votes of the people. If that is the case, then it's a win-win situation for us. And I think for the third force, um, if it was business that we're talking about, and I was a small business owner, and I can see that the big fry in this market is um, having issues, I'll start re-strategizing, marketing better, getting better quality, getting their clients. So that's also how I think that the third force candidates should look at this situation. All right, I quickly want to just um, ask you this uh, final question. Yeah. They, they, uh, Shetu talked about Buhari being the most selfless leader Nigeria has ever had. He talked about him slashing his salary by 50%. He also talked about his lack of flamboyance and all of that. What is, that is his opinion. What is your opinion? Well, um, unlike Shitu, I've not had the privilege of working in Mr. Buhari's cabinet. Um, this is not a shameless advertisement for myself. <laughs> but um, the important thing for me, though, is that um, I think we need to look at selflessness beyond slashing salaries and um, the appearance of hard work. And we have to look at selflessness from hard results. Are we getting the results we want? If that is not the case, then I am sorry. Um, because that thinking was also the same thinking. If you remember when President Buhari said that the, the idea of police is working very hard because the man has lost weight. Um, yes, you may have lost weight and you may be working very hard, but are you delivering results? I'm not saying he hasn't delivered results, but I'm saying that if we're going to be determining selflessness, selflessness has to be in applying yourself such that the people actually feel the results of this selflessness. I'm not saying that there are no results to his selflessness. I'm just posing the right question. And so, you are a lawyer <laughs> indeed. Thank you very much Thank for your you. thoughts on this segment. We'll Cheers. be right back with you. When we return from the break, we'll be talking tackling security in the Southwest. Do stay with us.